What's up, Twitch? Welcome to live coverage of the old Cranky Man Collectibles. What is it, October? It's our October team trios here at Game Castle in Ankeny, Iowa. My name is Blake, and I am here with Jeremiah. Hello. Stefan is not here this month. Rip. So for round one, we have at the top of your screen Ryan versus Travis. These two are no strangers to the old Cranky Man stream. Ryan took down the Modern event last month with this same deck. Said he's made a couple of changes to the deck list, but I would expect this to be a good game because he's playing against four, five, four, four or five? Four time? He is, he is Canadian Highlander royalty. Four time Canadian Highlander qualifier champion, Travis Wilcoxon. I'm pretty excited about this. So, the uh, the Rakdos scam mirror. What are we expecting here, Jay? Um, so you know these decks are essentially set up to try to play a pitch elemental, put it back into play for free. Uh, you know it's a pretty steep steep discount, and uh, can create some non games with brief on turn one. Yeah. Yeah, getting getting to discard two cards out of your opponent's hand on the, the first turn of the game before they even get to play a land is absolutely insane. Backbreaking for most strategies, and that can be compounded by uh, mulligans. So do we expect to see a lot of mulliganing here? Um, the decks are pretty consistent. I don't think they mulligan too, too much. Um, really, they're just looking for that grief, uh, a black card, and a scam. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, this is one of those decks where, like, if you have lands and spells and, like, a curve, things to do, you can basically keep the hand. You're not looking for necessarily specific A plus B things. Like, um, I, I feel like a hand that's, like, um, you know, some amount of interaction, maybe an Orcish, Orcish Bowmasters and something to follow it up with is probably a fine keep, especially, you know, going into game one blind. You, neither one of these players knows what the other one is playing. Yeah, I don't know how familiar they are with each other either. Um, sometimes you see somebody at a tournament, you have a pretty good idea what sure. they're, they're on. But, sure. Um, it looks like Ryan maybe does not have a turn one elemental, but he's got the Ragaman and the Bowmaster. Yeah, yeah, which is a fine curve. I think that's yeah. a pretty a pretty solid keep. Wouldn't be surprised if we see uh, that player keep this hand. Uh, Travis looks like maybe tanking on the hand, or perhaps the. Uh, the floor judge or TO is still going, doing the doing the pre-tournament rundown, as it were. So, uh, like we said, this is a team trios event. So, uh, Pioneer, Legacy, Modern. Uh, I didn't catch how many teams we have. Let me. Oh, we have thirty players. Ten teams. Ten teams. Yep. Thirty players. Nice. So that'll be uh, five. Is it five or six rounds? Uh, five. I Five rounds of Swiss, and then yeah. we'll cut. Well, okay, so we cut to a top four. So it's Swiss plus one. Okay. So, so it'll be six, six rounds of yeah. Swiss, and then we'll cut to the top four. Eight rounds of Magic coming your way. We'll be featuring Modern all day. Players just still having their uh, pre-tournament meeting. Should get things going here real quick. Um, I know I saw one uh, Bring to Light Beans deck. Oh, yeah. uh, out there, um, we have we have a couple of dedicated players that basically always play the same thing. So uh, I saw two Tron decks, which at the last uh, at the Modern tournament last month we didn't see any Tron. There were two Tron players uh, in the room. Neither one of them made the top eight though. So uh, Tron is one of those decks where like every time there's a pro tour. Everybody's like, oh, Tron's insane. It's so yeah. good. And then and then slowly over the next several months, uh, it falls off of the grid. And people are like, yeah, Tron's not good. It's not good. The deck is always good as a Tron player. Uh, uh, I, I feel very vindicated in saying that. You always feel confident playing Tron. Yeah, if you if you draw reasonably in Tron, you're going to win some games. Yeah. Uh, it's just kind of how it is. It's a consistent critical mass deck. Yeah. Like, there, there's it, 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 much like scam. It creates some non-games in a completely different way. What's more fair, griefing your opponent twice on turn one, or or playing a, a, a seven mana card on turn three? I mean, it, it's interesting because uh, <laughs> you know you can grief your your Tron opponent quite a bit, and they can still untap on turn three and play a seven drop. Like, yeah, you know, man. Uh, the, the power of the top decks and the Tron. Hell is, yeah, uh, that's really really what makes it. Uh, 
feeling, you know. Um, <laughs> Never didn't have it. Right. Yeah. It's, uh, so a couple of Tron decks out there. I saw Bring to Light Dean's deck. Um, you know, I've never uh, I've never watched Travis play modern, so it's always been uh, you know mono white and Canadian Highlander. Um, yeah. I'm a little shocked, but I shouldn't be because Travis is the kind of player that will just play the best deck. Oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I, I I would guess he's very comfortable with this, this style of magic too. You know, he's a, he, he's he's a well practiced player. He yes, doesn't, he doesn't just show up to something. So ten out of ten. Yeah. <laughs> So maybe Travis will get double qualified and he'll get to play. He'll get to play all weekend. Uh, the uh, the championship series and the Longlander champion championship taking place the first weekend in December. Um, championship series on Saturday, followed by the Longlander championship on Sunday. So a full weekend of championships. Uh, I would love to see a player double qualified. Yeah, that'd be <laughs> that's great. very exciting. Yeah, actually, you drive all the way home, or just maybe get a hotel room. <laughs> hey, man, he can sleep on my couch. Oh, Shit, I will let him sleep in my bed. I will sleep <laughs> on the couch. <laughs> uh, Travis, rooting for you, buddy. Uh, players are getting started here. Looks like Ryan's yeah. on a play. Going to start things off with a Polluted Delta and a Ragavan passing over to Travis. Yeah. Uh, in most formats where the, the card is legal, turn one Ragavan is, is, uh, is feared. And what are we going to see here? Uh, I see a Fury. And looks like yeah. Fury is going to get pitched. Uh, sending away a Ragavan, and here is a, what is this card called? Uh, not dead after all. Not no. dead after all. So, so it's, it's going to come back into play tapped with a Wicked Roll enchantment attached to it. What does the Wicked Roll do? Uh, the Wicked Roll is plus one, plus one, and when the roll leaves play, uh, your opponent loses one life. Okay, so this is a 4-4 four, four double striker right it now. Is, yes, yeah. and Ragavan died. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of pressure, but um, I think Ryan's going to be able to stall with his Bowmaster for a while. Sure, so we can flash in Bowmaster, ping, and then, and then block. Yeah, we so get, we're going to get two chumps out of it, probably. We um, get blockers for days. Um, I see a lightning bolt in Travis's hand. Uh, of course, an opposing Bowmaster would kind of really muck up the math there if Travis were to have his own Bowmaster. Yeah, it would, would not buy him quite as much time. Just, just one turn, probably. But, uh, Travis's hand is a little hard for me to read. But. Yep, I see a... Um, it's a Bowmaster, a Lightning Bolt, a Swamp, and I cannot tell what that fourth card is. Yeah, it's probably a scam card if we can't recognize it right away. <laughs> uh, one of these uh, sort of faint death effects. Yeah, the uh, playing six or seven. Yeah, I don't know off the top of my head. I I, I believe I think they're it's six, but uh, it could be could be size. Playing four copies of Not Dead After All, yeah. and then uh, two copies of Undying Evil, I believe, is what most of the deck lists play. Yeah. So here is a Fable of the Mirror Breaker. We need to get this guy a Magic Dad's Goblin Shaman. A Lightning Bolt is going to take care of it. Pass back over to Travis here. He draws a Ragavan off of the top. Swamp is going to come into play. Fury going to hit the red zone. Looks like Bowmasters is going to get fed to the fire. That'll go away. Second main phase. Here's a Ragavan. He'll pass back over to Ryan. He's going to hold the Bowmasters up here, so maybe catch him off the uh, Fable uh, move here. Uh, yep, so um, that would need to happen right now, because once we start discarding right. cards, um, the ability's already resolving. So He's going to let it go, it looks like. Yep. I don't, I mean, he's he's far enough ahead on board. I don't hate flashing the Bowmaster in there with the trigger on the stack. No, I, I think maybe he's just uh, more um, concerned with maybe just protecting the Fury. Yeah, um, yeah. If, if it gets removed from the game. Right, there's no reason, right back, yeah, right? there's no reason to overextend into something or he's already way ahead. So, yeah, that yeah. makes sense, too. Ryan is going to pause for just a minute here while thinking. Shelton, I'm back at this fetch. Contemplating life choices. <laughs> Two mana looks like. What's it going to be? It is a Douthy Voidwalker. Douthy Voidwalker, probably the best card in the mirror, I think. It's, it's very strong, yeah. Um, breaking up those Fane Death style effects. Um, the ability to steal your opponent's, uh, you know, cards. Yeah, and, and notably the faint death effects are very good on the Voidwalker as well. You know, you sack it to cast the spell, 
right. with the, uh, the and then you on bring it. yeah, and, and then you bring it back. It also you know it's basically unblockable. It has shadow, so. Right. Uh, looks like a Terminate is going to get pointed to the Fury, so the Fury is going to die and get exiled with a Shadow Counter on it. Is that what it's called? Shadow Counter? Uh, no, I don't know off the top of my head. Um, um, yeah, Dothy Voidwalker, uh, it does not track cards individually. They're put into exile with a counter on them, so yeah. uh, redundant copies of Dothy Voidwalker can cast cards previously exiled by other Dothy Voidwalkers. Uh, it looks like... Travis, what does Travis have to say about this? Yeah, I don't know. I, I imagine he's going to just try to keep the pressure up and get his Bowmaster going. Yeah. Yep, here is the Bowmaster. That's going to put Ryan down. Void counter. Void counter. It's yeah. going to put Ryan down to 13. That's not an Orc Army token. Come on, Travis. Sloppy. Everybody's going to get in the red zone here. Ragavan's going to trigger Grief is going to get exiled to Ragavan, so Travis will have a treasure token come in here. Yeah, and, and very good with the Grief, you know, uh, four mana. Uh, yeah, yeah, just being able to cast it. Just keep the pressure on. I mean, he's... Uh, have you ever seen somebody uh, do this and then evoke their uh, opponent's Grief and then cast a feign death on it? Don't do that. Your opponent yeah. gets their Grief. Yeah, yeah that seems <laughs> don't, suboptimal. Don't do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, I think Ryan is actually Helden, so Grief grief is just a 3-2 with Menace. Yeah, and notably, uh, the only blocker he has now is this Reflection. Um, yeah, because the Voidwalker cannot block. Right. Uh, uh, looks like Dothy Voidwalker is going to get sacrificed here to cast this copy of Fury. Yep. So... Two, one, and one, says Ryan. All of those are going to go away. We'll be left with the zombie army token here. Oh, Travis trying to steal Ryan's grief. Here, he says, I'll take that back. And this is the downside of playing Dragon Shield, Matt Lax. Yes. Your, your opponent could run off with your cards. <laughs> yes, don't play Dragon Shield, Matt Lax. For the love like of Travis has his own Voidwalker. Now. Yep, I see a Voidwalker and a, what is it called? Not Dead Yet? Uh, not dead after all. Not dead after all. Voidwalker, going to come into play, pass back over to Ryan. Uh, so this uh, reflection of Kiki Jiki is active. Looks like it's going to copy the Fury, take out both of these creatures. Yeah, so this game turned around on Travis pretty quick, uh, you know, with the down Voidwalker, which is why it's one of the best cards in the matchup. Yes. Uh, not dead after all is going to bring this void walker back. It'll have a wicked roll token. The army token is going to go away now. Fury, both furies are going to hit the red zone. This is a lot of damage. I mean, just you know, twelve damage. Yep, so twelve, yeah. right? Yeah. And a follow-up copy of Fable Mirror Breaker. Yeah, so Travis in a rough spot. Yeah, here. even even a Fury here, uh, not going to be able to quite claw him out. It's going to be a copy of yeah. Grief. Nobody can't cast the Fury and did not have a red card. Sure. And, so, um, yeah, there and is, that is going to be it for game one. So these players are going to get sideboarded, and we'll be right back with game two. These players have finished sideboarding and are shuffling up, drawing their first hand. So, Jeremiah, what did Travis do during sideboarding? Uh, Travis boarded out all of his thought seasons uh, in favor of a Children of the Apocalypse, Brotherhood's End, and a Fatal Push. Brotherhood's End deals three damage to each creature or destroys all artifacts with converted mana cost three or less? Correct, yep. Okay, so we don't care about the artifact part. Right? No. There's no, not any artifacts. It's just to basically um, a big pirate flag. It's a, yeah, it's to wrath the board. Yep. Okay. And then Shieldred, yep, in a grindy matchup, that card's gonna win. And then a fatal push. Just just generally just deals with the void walk. Takes basically. takes care of business. Alright, yeah. so Ryan um, took out three copies of Thoughtseize, a Blood Moon and a Not Dead After All, in favor of a Wear Tear. Shieldred the Apocalypse, and three Leyline of the Void. 
Yeah, yeah. The uh, the ley line's obviously a huge, right? So, yeah, so it's a huge uh, plus in Ryan's favor. Maybe yeah. he was just expecting to see a lot of scam today, you know. But, yeah. Yep, I think, well, at the last tournament, I think we had uh, four or five scam decks. So, I mean, looking at, what is that, 20, 18, 20% of the meta. So yeah. pretty pretty decent-sized chunk. It's a heads-up thing. I'm not super familiar with, like, the, the, the uh, you know, general sideboard for what scam looks like, but I, I feel like I have not seen Leyline and Void out of the scam sideboard. Maybe it's more common. Uh, than I than I think, but um, I know at least here locally covering uh, Rakdos scam decks is not something that I usually see out of their sideboards. Well, it, it seems like an interesting tension between needing to have a certain number of cards in your hand to pitch versus a turn zero action. Yeah, I mean? yep. um, yeah. There's there's a lot of scenarios where you can start turn one with or finish turn one with zero cards in your hand. Right, exactly. <laughs> but uh, it is a backbreaker in this mirror. So yeah, I know, think it's so. Worth it. uh, uh, I think probably the fatal pushes. Are maybe an answer to opposing shields because it's so easy to get revolt. Sure. Um, with these decks, both players going down to six here. Um, yeah, the, I, I would imagine that the wear tear uh, is just to, uh, you know, destroy opposing uh, ley lines. I can't think of another. I mean, uh, I mean it kills blood. It kill. Oh, d sure, it kills fable. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I mean, it kills blood moon, but I think um, that's not as good. In, in this matchup? Yeah, I would be surprised if uh, if they both have it in their sideboard, they're both comfortable with having it in play. Sure. You know, and I don't know if they both have them in their sideboard, but it's a pretty common card to be for yep. I think. Um, yep. I guess it does maybe destroy a Wicked Roll token. I don't see a scenario where that's good, but perhaps... Uh, yeah. So where is it? Uh, the, the white side is we're going to start playing with a Ley Line. In. Yeah. Uh, in play on Ryan's side, and Travis has a Ragavan pass over to Ryan. It's just going to be a tapped Blood Crip. Travis will untap and draw a card. Ragavan is going to hit the red zone. And looking at Travis's hand size, it looks like maybe he pulled all the way to five. Oh, did he? Yeah. Wow. Uh, but turn one Ragavan, never a bad place to be. Uh, looks like he is getting in there with the Ragman. Um, I did not see. Oh, was, was that the? Uh, oh, it just looks like he got maybe a Bloodstained Mire. Yeah, the, the blood the Bloodstained Mire is what got exiled to the Ragman. So he's going to follow that up with a Fable of the Mirror Breaker here. Yeah, so very good mold of five. Um, yeah, I mean, ra like Ragavan into Fable yeah. is is something. <laughs> yeah. Not not doing the scam thing so much, but just right up, right me down, you know. Uh, sure. But Bowmaster is a good answer there. So. Yep, Bowmaster is going to take care of this Ragavan. It's a good answer to the Ragavan. It's a great card to have him play for Chapter Two of Fable. Yep. Um, probably one of the cards uh, Travis really didn't want to see right there. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Like now, now he really has to pause and think about this. I see in his hand he's got a uh, couple of lands, so those are both going to go away. This Bowmasters is going to trigger. Take down the shaman. Shaman token it token is going to go away. Travis will draw two cards, so uh, Ryan has four power in play now. Two mana is going to be a Dothy Void Walker. We'll pass back over to Ryan here. Yes, we got the grief and the lightning bolt in Travis's hand, and those are not great answers to what's happening right now. No, they are certainly not. Uh, four damage going to come across here. Travis down to 13. Ryan's going to follow that up with a void walker of his own, and man, that is a beautiful void walker retro framed in foil there. Yep. Gorgeous. Fable of the Mirror Breaker going to go up to Chapter 3 and transform into Reflection of Kiki Jiki. So it looks like another copy of Fable. Yeah, unfortunately, it does not have the mana to cast uh, the Fable this turn. No, uh, we can we can take down either. Well, we can take down any of these creatures, uh, and then we will also get. Uh, let's see, the Reflection is summoning six, so we can't do that right now. So the only play available to Travis at this moment is to cast the Lightning Bolt, take care of one of these creatures. Of course, the Dothy Voidwalker can attack. And that's really what it does now with the Void, you know, the Leyline out. Yep. Um, 
but it's it's uh, it's a lightning bolt every turn. You know? Well, Travis's Voidwalker still gets two exile cards with Void counters yeah. on. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Uh, but they can also block each other. They yeah, both because they both, have, they both do have <laughs> shadow. So it looks like Ryan is going to offer a trade here. And Not Dead After All is going to bring this Stuffy Voidwalker back. Lightning Bolt in response, says Travis. So Voidwalker going to go away. Um, that's going to get exiled with a Void counter on it on Travis's side. And then the not dead after all will also get a void counter on it. So I mean, yeah. that was kind of a best case scenario for for Travis, I suppose. Yeah, um, I think he was uh, really able to maximize that lightning bolt, which wasn't super great um, up front. Well, and it leaves him in a position where he's basically a fury away from being right back where he wants. To yes. Be. Yep. With a red card in hand to pitch to it. So, exactly. yep. uh, what does Ryan have here? Two mana looks like it's going to be a Terminate to take care of the reflection of Kiki Jiki, and then both of these creatures are going to hit the red zone. Travis will go down to nine, and here is a Godless Shrine that's going to pass back. So the Godless Shrine is what's casting the uh, white half of Wear Tear. Yeah, yeah. So Ryan with a small white splash. Now I'm kind of interested to see if he has any other white cards, or if it's just the Wear Tear. Yeah, that's interesting. I don't know. Um, I don't know what the other white cards might be, you know, uh, in the sideboard here. Um, he has engineered explosives, I know. Oh, so okay. you know, he can he can put more mana into Sunburst, I suppose. That's a, is that a Croxa? Uh, Croxa is getting pitched to this grief here. So Ryan has another copy of Not Dead after all. That's going to go away for the grief and then grief is going to get exiled under the ley line travis i think just holding a land is the last card in hand a land i'm not sure yeah he put his hand down so yeah under pressure here from this uh army token though i don't believe it's a land it's a red card I might oh it's fable. the it's yeah. the fable yeah. yep that's right so four damage you're going to come across here uh, Travis down to just five. Ryan is just going to draw and pass back. It's another copy of Fable of the Mirror Breaker off the top. Um, Daffy Voidwalker going to hit the red zone. So another copy of Orcish Bowmasters will do this. A Lightning Bolt will do this. How is Ryan going to close this off? It is going to be a Daffy Voidwalker. Travis will untap, and it's going to be a Grief off of the top. And that is going to do it. So Ryan is going to take this down 2-0 against Travis again. This is a Team Trios event. So uh, the other two players are still playing their games. And whoever has more wins at the end of it is the team that wins the game. So, uh, well... Um, Pretty rough, pretty rough game for uh, Travis. It there. was, mold yeah. Five, mold of five and then not really drawing any lands. or. And one of the best pieces of hate against this deck. Yeah. Play on turn zero. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, uh, the ley line was very, very good. Yeah. All right. Well, we will be back with round two in just a little bit.